Many of us have been influenced in some way by listening to a vocation story or a testimony. If you have ever been to a World Youth Day, a Eucharistic Congress, a Steubenville con conference, any large religious gatherings really, or even one of our adoration nights here at the parish, you would have heard priests, nuns, those in religious life, and the laity speak about how they discerned their vocation and responded to the divine call. If you have not been to one of these large gatherings, you have probably heard something equivalent on television by channel surfing on a Sunday morning, after Mass, clearly, and for those watching on the live stream, after the live stream, and listened to a televangelist and their extravagant testimonies. Testimonies and vocation stories reveal to us the workings of grace, God's free gift in the lives of countless souls. Because they show the reality of God's grace working in the lives of ordinary people, and not some theological idea about grace, testimonies and vocation stories are an effective means of evangelization. They influence us. They inspire us. The readings that we have just heard tell us stories of the divine call. Vocation stories of three unique men, the prophet Isaiah, St. Paul, and St. Peter. In each of these call stories, we recognize that it is the Lord who initiates. He acts, and then they react. They respond to the call of our Lord. As Bishop Robert Barron calls it, it is the invasion of God's grace in their lives and their cooperation with that grace. With the call of Isaiah, it was a very powerful experience engaging all his senses, so much so that the imagery Isaiah provides is quite vivid. He is caught up into the heavenly temple and beholds God's glory and the ministry of the sixth-winged seraphim. These heavenly beings minister to God by singing the praises of the thrice holy Lord, Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. By praising God as holy, they are saying that he stands above everything else. And using the highest form of superlative language that is available in Hebrew, the thrice holy Lord, they are praising God who stands far above all other beings. He is the creator with no limitations and no imperfections that created beings have. In the presence of the glory of God, the only response that Isaiah could give was to humble himself and be contrite for his sinfulness. Our Lord purifies Isaiah of his uncleanliness and Isaiah responds with generosity for the prophetic mission in the service of the Lord. Here am I, send me. God's grace invaded his life, and he cooperated with that grace by accepting the divine call and trusting in God's will. And he would be the great prophet sent to the southern kingdom of Judah to proclaim repentance reconciliation, restoration. For St. Paul, God's grace invaded his life on the road to Damascus. This decisive event becomes the subject of his meditations for the rest of his life. In this event where he encountered Jesus, he experienced God's grace, his merciful love. It was in this encounter with the risen Christ that St. Paul would receive a missionary mandate to go and preach the good news to the Gentiles. In his letters to the various Christian communities that he established, St. Paul would continually go back to this event that gave his life a new horizon and a decisive direction. In saying, but for the grace of God, I am what I am, St. Paul is communicating his tangible experience of this grace. He knows it's real. He has tasted it personally. And it was through this grace of God that St. Paul recognized he was a great sinner, undeserving of the apostolic mission, 
in light of persecuting the church. But God loved him, forgave him, restored him, so that he would be the apostle to the Gentiles, the great evangelist that would convert and bring about Christ to those in Europe and Asia Minor. No more clearer of an example of the invasion of God's grace is in the life of St. Peter. It was not a powerful experience like St. Paul being knocked off his horse or Isaiah being caught up into the heavenly temple. As the gospel reveals, it was simple. Jesus got into his boat. No invitation, no asking for permission. Our Lord just got into the boat. And yet there is freedom in this encounter. Peter cooperates. Even though he seems reluctant, he puts out the nets. And the fruit of cooperating with our Lord is a great catch. A multitude of fish. Not only does he need his boat, he needs the other boats. It was so abundant of what happens when he worked with God. Like St. Paul like Isaiah, St. Peter's response to the invasion of grace is humility, contrition. Get away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. But because God is holy, he can forgive the man who realizes that he is a sinner before him. He would be set apart and given the mandate by Jesus to feed his sheep and be the rock on which the church would be built. What about us? What is our story going to be? For many of us, we can easily be caught up in ourselves, in our own little world, pervaded by consumerism, frivolous pleasures, and a blunted conscience. Caught up in our own interests and concerns, with no room for the other, and the voice of God silenced. But when God's grace invades and bursts our little bubble, especially in the sacraments of the Eucharist, where we sing Sanctus, 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 Holy, 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 being caught up into that reality of God's temple. And in confession, where we say, I am a sinful man, will we cooperate with God? and actually sing and mean, Here I am, Lord. It brings us to contrition. It brings us to conversion. The other option is to ignore it and continue on, on in our lives. Another way to look at this, will we stay on the shore and catch nothing? or follow the promptings of our Lord and put out into the deep waters and go for the big catch. Pope St. John Paul II, in his encyclical, as we enter the new millennium, writes, Duke in altum, put out into the deep. These words ring out for us today, and they invite us to remember the past with gratitude, to live the present with enthusiasm, and to look forward to the future with confidence. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Only in the depths of God's love and mercy will we see the fruit of God's grace, not only in our lives, but in the lives of the other, in those that we encounter every day. In this way, we will become fishers of men effective and inspiring evangelists able to share our story in word and in deed at the pulpit of life.